gentleman here, um, he gives so much. You're just a shell of just giving and giving your whole inside, and I think it's beautiful. Um, what I connected with him most was his awareness and, and what he tries to portray and to teach everybody. Um, our society nowadays, I, I feel, we're a little bit unaware. We're a little bit, we look at the internet, we look at all this stuff, and, and we just kind of, it's, it's, it's all a surface in a, in a way. Yeah. And I don't feel a lot of us are in touch with who we really are and love and the self-respect that we should have mm -hmm. for ourselves mm -hmm. to able to transport that out into yeah. the universe. Yeah. Um, you also are part of the lavender effect, yeah. which talk about that for a moment. Yeah, so I'm an advisor to uh, the lavender effect, which is an organization built on just raising awareness of the contributions that LGBTQ people make in society. And for me, um, through my life experience, one of the things that I got, we talked about awareness, was acceptance. You know, I always uh, perceived myself as being accepting, but when I really wrapped my uh, mind around what it is to be accepting, it is really allowing life as it unfolds to not uh, be fixed as a good or bad, but to be to experience what's available in the opportunities that can be in service to who you are and what's important to you. And so when we talk about the lavender effect, I advise just from my own perspective, I am a member of the LGBTQ community um, and being raised in the South, you know, the Bible Belt, um, there are concepts that we're taught about who we are even before we discover who we are that we have a choice, whether we know or not, to believe that is true or isn't true. Um, and so when my friend, the founder, Andy Sacker of The Lavender Effect asked me to contribute in some way, I made a commitment to util utilizing my own life experience to be a vehicle that others get access to what's possible in our um, awareness of who we are in the world and what matters to us and what can we be a contribution to. So The Lavender Effect does that. It, it uh, does a whole host of things in terms of educating people about the differences that we have that make us unique, but also how those differences are so vast among the human society that it's really sh it shows how more so we're the same. Um, and, you know, a time like now is, is, is a great opportunity for people to see what the Lavender Effect is doing and to relate um, to people who may be your brothers, sisters, uncles, aunts, teachers, doctors, attorneys, Absolutely. who may also be um, part of the LGBTQ community, who are part of the human family, just a unique expression. The Lavender Effect really gives us an opportunity to, to experience our uh, uniqueness and how we're more so alike and I'm glad to be a support to that organization and you teach us yeah about the humanity of we all come from the same place yes we are all the same inside yes. <laughs> um, let's get to at which point did you think or did you how do I put this at what point did you decide did you make the choice that I'm going to be this human vessel that I'm going to share my gift and change humanity. You know, living here in Hollywood, everyone is working to fulfill their dream, right? <laughs> right. And, uh, you know, I have always had a whole host of things that I, I have aspired to do. Um, and many people would, who follow me, they see that I have my hands in a lot of different things. Um, and so, when I discovered that I have a lot of gifts that allow people to see what's possible just through my own self-expression, um, I made a commitment to be that, to be an expression of what's possible. And so when I made the commitment to be an expression of what's possible, I don't limit what it is that I choose or can or have access to doing. Uh, so whether it's gardening, which I love landscape ah, design, um, <laughs> or if it's interior design, mm -hmm. or if it's working in the technology world, if it's being a leader, or if it's being an artist, whether it's music, or whether it's graphics, public relations, entertainment, I love these things. These are expressions of who we all get to be and really who we all are. Uh, most of the people that I um, coach or that I work with say, you know, these are things that I've always liked to do, but I never knew that I could do them because maybe I have gone to school to be an attorney. 
but I really would like to be a designer but like this is where I got my my career my career um, rooted in this is how people know me this is how people relate to me and what I support people in knowing just even through my own experience and my my own self-expression is you can be whatever you choose and there is a balance that you can find in being all these different things and in you choosing to be all of these different expressions you're impacting people's worlds you're letting people see what's possible well like we discussed earlier i mean it's limitless what you really want to ch what you really want to learn the knowledge that you want to intake is limitless yes you don't have to be one thing yeah you can be like i said I have a plethora of jobs. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> myself. Um, but it it broadens your spectrum of your knowledge. And it connects and it, us. Yes. With so many yes. so many people on different levels and we get to have experiences that would not otherwise be had if we confined ourselves to a definition of as I example I use an attorney, you're just in that world. You right, don't get right, to experience right, right. the world of a designer, which is very artistic, you know. Well, speaking of designer and landscape, because yeah. um, I think that I'm a landscaper, and um, <laughs> I, if if anybody out there is watching and you know my yard is is very important, at the age of 14, yeah. you created and developed yeah. the uh, landscaping design. Company, the, yeah. Yes. What yeah. what was that? Oh my God! So at 14 that, though. Yeah, at that point, <laughs> it was an escape for me. It was an outlet. Um, I started landscaping just as a vehicle to escape from my childhood. Um, as I stated, my dad was uh, impacted uh, by uh, PTSD. He fought in Vietnam. Uh, we were in the South. There were, uh, I have four other siblings. It was a very difficult time and we were really poor and I saw an outlet uh, through landscaping through plants through just an artistic expression is what it was for me um, but I think my tenacity to really do the best job and I think my mom instilled that in me to do the best at whatever you do um, I really got a lot of acknowledgement from clients that I had that I ultimately had to turn what I was doing into a business and it, it, it it became a business. It wasn't an intention that I had to make a business. It's just the, the my work ethic at the time, my commitment to do a good job, and my excitement in doing something that took me away or distracted me from my re reality of being poor and being raised in um, really difficult times, it, it manifested as a, a business for me. And I still love to landscape. I still love gardening. I still <laughs> Guess utilize Guess you're it. coming. You're coming to my house. <laughs> and, and hey, I love, I love Southern California. And, you know, the, the vegetation here is unique. You, there's so many beautiful plants. There's always something blooming. And it's art. I see it as, as, as art. One of the books that I've written is um, about uh, teaching people to connect with the plant kingdom and discover something about themselves through the process and so I hope to have that out within the next couple oh, of years. Oh really? So, oh so I look forward book. to that. Yeah. That's interesting. Yeah, it's called Let Plants Be Your Friend. Oh okay. Yeah, and I wrote it with my nephew Peyton Williams. So Okay and um, when, are we, when are we looking for that one? Is that to be expected? I hope to have that out uh, either by the end of this year or mid spring next oh, year. Oh that's cool. Yeah. Just in time to plant some things. Everybody, everybody, everybody needs love.